In a case of an emergency, it's important to remain calm. You can be prepared by taking a first aid class. The American Red Cross offers first aid and CPR courses that would prepare you for handling minor trauma such as cuts and burns and also extremity injuries. Also important would be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of medical issues such as chest pain, bad headaches, fainting, and abdominal pain. In addition to basic training, a basic first aid kit is important to have at home. Whether you build one yourself or purchase one at a local outdoor store, I would be sure to include something for pain, such as acetaminophen, maybe something for diarrhea, such as loperamide, and an antihistamine in case of allergic reactions. And here's one of my favorite little gadgets to have. It's a splinter forceps you can buy at your local hardware store that allows you to pull out splinters that are lodged underneath your fingernail or in your skin. One of the things we see a lot of in the emergency department are people who are concerned that they might be having a heart attack. Some of the signs of a heart attack include chest discomfort or discomfort in other areas of the body, such as the arm, the neck, the jaw, and the upper abdomen. Other signs would include shortness of breath or associated symptoms like nausea, cold sweats, palpitations, or lightheadedness. Sometimes it's even just an acute onset of unexplainable fatigue. If you have or have someone who has the signs and symptoms of a stroke or a heart attack, time is very important. It is important to get into the emergency department to get evaluated for these situations. If you call 911, speak clearly and calmly and remain on the line. Do not hang up until the dispatcher tells you to hang up. When the paramedics do arrive, once again remain calm and stay out of their way. Be prepared to provide the information that they ask for. If the patient has discussed with you any end of life wishes, please convey these immediately to the paramedics. If the patient is a child, understand that they have no preconceived notions about what will happen and will mirror the emotions of the parent or the caregiver. So remain calm and be supportive. So what is an emergency? The easiest soundbite way of thinking of it is anything that is life or limb threatening. Uh, legal definition is anything that a prudent layperson feels is going to cause serious impairment to an organ or to the person themselves. We treat every patient that walks into the emergency department. But please keep in mind, if you have ankle pain and you're presenting to the emergency department, it's likely that we'll see the patient with chest pain first. To make the most of the time that you're waiting, please consider writing down all the concerns that you have so that when I come into that room, I can make sure I address all of your needs. Feel free to ask the doctor or nurse how long you're expected to be in the emergency department and whether you're likely to be admitted to the hospital. Another good idea is to bring a friend or family member with you so that they can hear the information from the doctor and nurse and help you remember what happened during the course of your emergency department stay and how to best manage your medical condition. No one can see an emergency coming, but one thing you can do to be prepared when that emergency happens is to please, right now, when you have this free moment, write down a list of all of your past medical history, if you can, past surgical history, a list of all your medications, and very importantly, allergies. And also, if you could put down the name of a close contact person so that in the event something should happen, we know who to call. Please put that list in your wallet, on your person, at your bedside. So if ever the time comes that you need to call 911, they know what to grab. Every moment that you save me from having to look up that information, that you have that information with you, is more time that I can spend with you and care for you. So please help me help you. So you're on your way to the emergency department. Your child has injured their head, they have a cut, they've hurt their arm or their leg, or they just are looking quite ill. Please make sure you don't feed them before you come to the emergency department, just in case additional testing is required. Because we have an electronic medical record at Mills Peninsula, we usually send a message to your primary care provider to let them know that you've been seen in the emergency department. However, it is always a good idea to call your primary care doctor to make sure that you're improving and to make sure that all of your concerns have been addressed. 